Merry Christmas, and welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. This holiday season, we're looking at the Candy Cane. I was hesitant to make this a Bad Weapon Academy initially. The Candy Cane is one of those weapons that really rides the line between good and bad so closely that I wasn't sure where to place it. I mean, hell, you saw the intro. When the hell was the last time I was able to get a godlike with a featured weapon? What, the Liberty Launcher? It's not like I killed anyone with the candy cane itself, but when the issue is survivability, then a godlike is a pretty sure indicator that it can't be all bad. When I did my weapon tier list stream, I placed it in C tier, which is where other bad weapons like the Brass Beast, Liberty Launcher, and Classic ended up too. But C tier isn't a sure thing bad weapon. I covered those weapons mainly because the other options in the same slot are just so good that a C tier is really underwhelming. But a C tier for a scout melee? That's not so bad, right? I mean, you barely ever use your melee as a scout anyway, who cares? Well, if you've ever fought an explosive class while holding this thing, you should. Let's talk about why. The candy cane is pretty simple. Once you equip it, any enemy you kill will drop a small health pack that can be picked up by yourself your teammates, or even your enemies. It functions identically to any other small health kit, replenishing one fifth of the HP of whoever picks it up, with the small exception that it won't recharge the lunchbox items of heavies at full health, and it will despawn after a small period of time. The downside to this is that you take 25% more damage from explosive weapons. Considering how high damaging most explosive weapons already are, and how low your health pool is, this is a really crippling downside. Other than that, it functions identically to the stock bat in terms of damage, swing speed, all that jazz. One of the interesting things about the candy cane is that both of its effects are passive, a trait not shared by many other melee weapons. Weapons like the Power Jack or Warrior Spear will only have damage vulnerabilities while active, same as their upsides. But with the candy cane, you can kill someone with any of your weapons out and be rewarded for it with free health or have any of your weapons out and be punished for it with harsh explosive damage. Let's talk about the upside first. Having small health packs drop on kill is really nice, and it's a unique upside as a reward for killing an enemy. It almost functions as a diet mad milk, or I guess low fat mad milk, you know, 1%. It has the same core concept behind it, do damage and kill people to keep yourself in the fight longer or even support your teammates. The difference is being, it's not consumable and on a timer, and in fact, it's basically always active, which is good, but it can only affect the person you're killing after they've already died by your hand and going to roughly the location they died, which is bad. It's a give and take, but that helps keep it balanced and not a straight upgrade to what is arguably Scout's most powerful tool. Not that it would be in any case, since it's not like enemies can steal your mad milk unless a pyro reflects it back at you. Speaking of pyros, this is one of the best applications of the candy cane, as the small health pack will extinguish a pyro's afterburn or any other damage over time effect while giving you a little bit of health on top of that. If you're the kind of scout who can secure a kill on a pyro often, but struggle to survive in the aftermath, then this might just be the melee for you. And it fills the pyro counter function arguably better than the sun on a stick which has this function specifically built in mind. On the subject of counters, it's also a great weapon for seeing if a spy you've killed has activated his dead ringer. If he drops a health pack, you can rest assured knowing he's really dead, but if not, you know he's still around. Back on the subject of enemies taking your health packs, in order to potentially take advantage of this, you could bait them into a predictable position to secure an easier kill, but more often than not, this effect could just screw you over in a larger team fight. In fact, a psychological effect I've noticed while using it is that it's easy to get tunnel visioned onto your own health kit, and it can make your movements far more predictable if you're not careful. Health packs are best saved for after a fight, or unless you've got no other choice. Overall, it's great for killing single targets, but it's less beneficial in larger groups unless you can somehow ensure enemies won't be able to get to the pack. On the flip side, if you have a teammate close by in a fight and you finish the enemy off, They'll probably be pretty grateful for you kill stealing if it gives them enough health to safely get away or back into the fight. However, one super niche problem is that if the server you're playing on has Halloween mode enabled, that turns your small health kits into little chocolate bars which blend into the game's color palette a lot better and can therefore be harder to spot when you or your enemies need health. Anyway, to sum things up, the closer you are to your enemies, the better this upside is. 
which can be a problem when getting into the downside. Explosives are kind of a bitch. You know how scout mains love to complain about the direct hit being able to one-shot them, even though it's their fault for running right into the face of a direct hit soldier without even staggering their movement or attempting to maintain even a medium range? Imagine that, but it's pretty much every explosive weapon in the game. I think only the Liberty Launcher and Airstrike won't be able to one-shot you even at max ramp up. Everything else though, rockets, stickies, and grenades especially are your kryptonite. Grenades are the real bitch thanks to their lack of damage fall off. It essentially turns every single grenade launcher into the old lock and load against you. One tap and if you're not overhealed, boom, you're dead. And the current lock and load is basically an explosive sniper rifle against you. There are also sentry rockets to worry about, but honestly, as a scout, you're usually a dead man running in front of a sentry regardless. I can only see this being an actual detriment if the engineer is using the Wrangler to target you specifically with the rockets at long range. Thanks to damage ramp up, grenades aren't the only thing you have to worry about being able to one-shot you. Rockets have a base damage of 90, but this can go up to 112 with damage ramp up, putting you well within one-shot range of a soldier you get too close to. Stickies can do the same thing, but they aren't always the biggest concern for scouts since they are pretty slow and you're one of demo's best counters. But if the demo uses the quickie bomb launcher, that can change very quickly. Good thing no one's made a video recently about why you should use that weapon. <laughs> so what this adds up to is the candy cane's upside and downside work against each other, but only against explosive classes. Against anything else, it's almost always a straight upgrade unless the enemy takes your kit. But against explosive classes, suddenly you need to get a lot better at scout. I guess it's almost like the reverse of the short circuit in that regard. So what's the deal? How do we make this weapon work for us? Well, let me start off by saying this. It is a blessing, or more accurately, a Christmas miracle, that of all the classes to have this downside, it's Scout. Since he is easily the class most capable of avoiding explosive damage thanks to his insane on-demand mobility. If someone like Demo, Heavy, or Sniper had this same melee with the same upsides and downsides, it wouldn't go so well for them. But just because it's an avoidable downside doesn't mean it still isn't one. So it's best to use a loadout that complements this item. Using the shortstop to enhance your mid-range combat against explosive classes to stay out of their range is one way to work against the downside. However, it doesn't let you take advantage of the upside as often and is a lot more punishing in terms of your damage output. If you can use it to support your teammates, this can work out for you. But again, it runs a risk of accidentally healing any nearby enemies. My personal recommendation for a primary is the Soda Popper. The fast firing and reload means you can take out any nearby enemies quickly and efficiently, in the best case scenario before they even have time to react. And the hype meter can make you nearly unhittable should you run into an explosive class, assuming it's full when you do meet them. Most of the primaries can work for you though. I found success with stock and even the babyface's blaster. However, it's worth noting that the force of nature knocking your enemies away can potentially mess you up by launching your health kit too far away. For secondaries, I wouldn't say there's a wrong choice with the exception of the Criticola. While it does make you a lot punchier at close range, the fact that it marks you for death makes you highly vulnerable to splash damage, and even lets Airstrike and Liberty Launcher soldiers one-shot you now. And long-range directs from any explosive are now a lot more dangerous, even if you're overhealed. As for the other secondaries, the Stock Pistol is a great mid-range harassment tool and close-range finisher in pretty much any situation. If you find yourself needing to back up out of the range of an explosive class or finish off someone after a soda popper burst, it's a great choice. Bonk has the benefit of letting you pick your fights a lot more safely. If you can find an opportunity to drink it, you can get out of a fight you know you can't win, or even flank behind the enemy to catch your explosive counters or other high priority targets off guard. The winger is also good for flanking, but with this set in particular, its best utility is gaining high ground. High ground is both an explosive class's greatest weakness and a scout's greatest strength. Being able to hit your enemies while they can't hit you nearly as easily is a big part of what makes good scouts so terrifying, and the winger allows you to take advantage of this on the fly, or it can simply help you mitigate splash damage at the best of your ability. The guillotine is a great mid to long range option. 
good for buttering up enemies before you engage them in a proper fight, or finishing off targets at longer ranges. It doesn't have all that much synergy with the candy cane, but I wouldn't call it a bad option. If you want to roleplay as a mobile dispenser, you can use the Mad Milk to become the ultimate support scout. And this is the set I would recommend running the shortstop with the most. My personal favorite pick is the Pocket Pistol. The lack of three bullets is a fairly negligible downside, and the health on hit pairs very nicely with the small health packs, keeping you in the fight and aggressive for as long as possible. Think of the Pocket Pistol as your Flame Belch and the Candy Cane as your Glory Kills, and you'll get a decent idea of how to use this loadout. The Candy Cane is probably one of the most extreme examples of tough love in the entire game. If you're not so great at Scout, and find yourself dying to soldiers and demos often enough as it stands, you're probably gonna hate this weapon, and it's gonna hate you back. It's got an odd sort of learning curve to it that makes it more worth using during that learning process than once you are already a top tier scout. Because here's the thing, once you get really, really good with your movement, to the point where explosive classes can rarely ever touch you, you're not gonna be taking much damage from anything at all. When you're at full health, what happens with that health kit is largely out of your control, and it can end up screwing you over should someone else grab it mid-fight. So the candy cane is simultaneously better and worse the better you get at scout. It's better in that it makes certain fights a lot more forgiving, but worse in that once you're at a certain point, there isn't much point in using it outside of intentionally handicapping yourself. I've only ever seen a handful of scouts reach a level that makes this thing useless though, so it's not a big deal. This isn't like getting good enough at Sniper to make the Bizarre Bargain a straight upgrade where all you have to do is get two headshot kills and not die. If dodging explosives is something you need help learning to do, the Candy Cane will force you to get good at it or die trying. And you will die in the process. A lot. For some general tips, keep to high ground as much as possible. You'll get hit by splash much less frequently, which forces enemies to hit directs on you. It's also not the enemy you see in front of you that you always have to worry about. The most dangerous soldier or demo is the one you can't see. So vigilance is absolutely essential. This is the area where the weapon is the most punishing, because in the majority of situations, it's not going to be your fault that you didn't know a soldier or demo was right around the corner you're checking, but with any other melee, you aren't punished for not having psychic powers or wall hacks. For this reason, among others, I would say you're best off using this on a map with as few chokes as possible. If you're playing on Koth or 5CP, you're probably going to have a lot of fun with this, but on something like Payload or Attack Defend, that's a very different story. Having a medic on your team will help you avoid getting one shot once you're overhealed, but it also stands a very good chance of making the benefit redundant. After all, if you're regularly overhealed, then you won't have much need for small health packs outside of fringe situations or for the medic himself. You're also going to need to do a cost-benefit analysis on when going for a health pack is going to be worth it or not. There's going to be plenty of situations where trying to get it is going to get yourself killed. So it'll likely be better to simply use your mobility to get out of there and let the enemy take it for themselves. Also, one last thing that I just think is kind of funny. If you kill bind with the candy cane, your corpse will drop a health kit. So I'm sure you could use that to your advantage in very fringe situations. Like a suicide play to save a burning medic or something. And that about covers the candy cane. It's a simple weapon with a lot of nuance to it. It requires a very specific skill set to use properly. And once you do manage to achieve that, it's really not a terrible weapon. Could it be better? I certainly think it could. How you would make it better depends on how you choose to buff it. The direction I'd like to go is like this. Change the 25% explosion penalty to an overall 15% damage penalty on all sources. It's still punishing, but not to the point where you're likely to be one-shot by something that you didn't even see coming. Then, my other suggestion, would be to give you some capacity to use the small health kit even if you're at full health. I have two possible suggestions for this one. One is to give yourself or your teammates overheal upon picking it up. Up to one-fifth of the health of whoever picks it up. This is a simple change, but it could really let you snowball larger fights and help offset your weakness without needing a medic. My other suggestion would be to give it a more supportive role, that doesn't rely on your teammates noticing the pack and picking it up for themselves, which can be hard for them to keep track of in the middle of a teamfight. If you're at full health, picking up the health kit 
will fill up a new Sandman-style meter that can't be charged by any other means. This would allow you to launch the health kit like a baseball at any teammate you want, kind of like a mix between the Sandman and the Crusader's crossbow. You would also be able to launch it at enemies, which could lead to griefing, but there might be some workarounds to that. Like, the health kit simply does a minimal amount of damage instead of healing the enemy, like 1 or 5 damage or something. When paired with the Mad Milk especially, this would lead to Scout becoming a very unique support class, which I think would be interesting. But, even if it stayed exactly the same, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I guess you could also festivize it, but it's pretty damn festive as it stands. It would also be funny if you could apply one of those gaudy Christmas war paints to it, especially the one that just looks like a candy cane texture. In any case, for now, go out there and give the enemies a taste of the Christmas spirit and peppermint and tell them Fish said Merry Christmas. <laughs> the evil Dr. Krentis is defeated. <laughs> <laughs> 